turn a cocoon and then a butterfly. Okay, it turns into a cocoon or a chrysalis. And then, you know, the caterpillar is inside that cocoon, and then all of a sudden it turns into a butterfly. Yeah, That's just amazing. That's like a magic trick. But the dragonfly has a similar life cycle. So the dragonfly lays an egg in the water, and then it turns into a, a dragonfly nymph. And the hand goes down here, knuckles out. The other hand goes up on top. That helps you paddle, but also it makes you sure you know where this end is so you're not hitting the person behind you or next to you. So keep your two hands on it, and then you put it in the water in front of you, and then pull. Lift it gently, don't splash. You put it in the water in front of you and pull. If the wind gets tough, I might ask you to push, and then you just go that way. Just the opposite. All right, so we're nature detectives. We're going to be looking up. We're going to be looking out. We're going to be listening. And what else? That's pretty much it. And like in all science, sometimes everything works right, and sometimes it doesn't. So we might see things. We might just enjoy the scenery. And pay attention to the rocks. Some of the rocks are amazing. I see a stick under here. And our, a our first destination. Oh yeah. Wait. Some yeah. people call it an inchworm. I call it a uh, seventh, eighth worm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You brought sleeping bags, right? And supper. Yep. yep. And note paper so we can write letters to people? No. No, no. I'm just teasing. <laughs> we brought, we brought. Yes. Yes. My mom was in the Oh, wait. Oh, that green um, thing over there, that's my grandma. Oh, really? Yeah. Why yeah. is there What does she keep in there? Uh, Kylie. Kylie. Kylie.
teachers and on our hike we are going to be looking out for some cool things in nature right because you guys know this isn't like a zoo it's not like the animal is going to be in a cage and it's held in one spot we have to look for clues that the animals leave behind and look carefully to find the new things in nature so you're going to be in charge of looking carefully when we're on the trail but we're also going to listen, listen. So let's just all be quiet for some There's someone singing a whole symphony right now, which is exciting. So you guys are in charge of, of looking, and if you see something cool, you can be like, Miss Matcha, what's that? Or let's look at this. We're gonna check out cool stuff along the trail. But while we were hiking, it's gonna be very important that we keep our feet. Do you know what plant that is? Do you know if it's gonna give you a rash? No. <laughs> so, yeah, the lions are really nice. important. No, that so was just a dandelion. But my point is, we're going to keep our feet. So right now you're breaking that rule because your feet aren't on the pavement. So we're going to keep our feet the whole time on the pavement. And I don't want you guys to grab at plants unless I tell you that it's a safe plant to touch. Okay, there's a few plants along the trail that could give you a rash and we don't want that to happen. What's a rash? I'm not, a I rash? already have eczema. A rash is when your oh, yeah, skin God. gets itchy and kind of red bumps and it's very uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see a dragonfly? Right there. Oh, boys and girls, look. Um, there's actually two insects flying around right here. One is long and skinny right here. Yeah, you know, it's a cousin of a dragonfly. When it's so skinny like that, it's called damselfly. Can you guys say damselfly? A damselfly. And it's a cousin of a dragonfly. A dragonfly. Same kind of thing. Do you see when he lands, he folds his wings up? And he just looks like a little stick, right? Yeah. To keep animals away. Yes, that's a good way to kind of camouflage and keep safe. So right now, that damselfly, there's another one, doesn't know if we're dangerous or not, if we're going to eat it or not. So oh, is yes. anyone going to eat it? No. 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 <laughs> Me neither. But I mean, I if we were a certain kind of bird, we would yeah. try to eat it, right? So that's why it has ways to keep its body safe. Good job finding those. No, I did that. Nice. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, last thing we need. Usually when you think of a flower, you think of this purple kind of shape, right? Where you make a little drawing and you draw the petals like this, right? But this is more of a normal kind of flower. The jack flower, jack in the pulpit, is a very unique kind of flower and has a shape that is so unusual. And it likes to hide out under its plant. So these are the leaves of the jack flower and they're okay to touch, so I'm gonna move the leaves out of the way so you can see the flower better. Look at this one right there. I guessed it was a dragon. Can you see it? Yeah. That's so pretty, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that flower is called Someone Jack is in the Pulpit. And it only blooms for a couple of weeks in the spring. So we're really lucky that right now we get to, to see it. So let's see how carefully you guys can look. Right around this area, there are about three more Jack flowers. So use your nature detective eyes, and if you see one, all right. There's so, one. Yeah, he, he found one over there, poking underneath. There. Go over there. Your friends are pointing to it. I found one more. Yeah, look at that. Good job. Oh, watch me. 
So if you guys want, we can keep track of how many we can find, okay? Yeah. There's so many of them. Yeah. Do you see this one? So many. I want to touch one. Three. Three. Seven. 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 No, that's Seven. Eight. 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 Nine. We're at nine. 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 No, we're at nine. Let's do one. Go. There's so much birds. Yeah, there's a lot of birds. I'll show the whole class and friends in a little bit. Right now, I'm also kind of looking for a place I think might be a good animal home. Oh, there's some more Jack in the Pulpit. Yeah, 10-11. Yeah, so there's some more. Well, yeah. And girls, we're going to stop here because one of your friends noticed this. What is that? That's a good question. So rather than me tell you, we are going to look carefully and figure it out. So boys and girls, see if you can look all around and figure out what this mound is where I came from. Wait, but where's the tree? I don't see it's it. It's there. there. Oh, all right. Keep your feet on the trail. Okay, okay, okay. Yep, got it. Look, behind here, there's this tree trunk, right? So this probably was a standing up tree at some point. But what do you think could have happened? A storm hit and too much wind knocked it down. Yeah. So now yeah. it's a cave. Okay, I love your thinking. There are plenty of um, storms we've had this winter and this spring that have made limbs of trees fall down or whole trees fall down. So I think that happened. A storm or some wind made it fall down and then what are we looking at here, this scraggly the stuff? Root. Roots, good. The roots are normally hidden under the ground but now we get to see them. Now why are roots helpful for a tree? What do the roots do? Tell me one thing the roots they, do. They get water on the floor. Yes, they, they suck up the water that's in the soil and the tree can drink that water. What else? That, um, they help the tree stay in so it doesn't fall out. Excellent. They help the tree be stable. I'm going to tell you something kind of crazy, boys and girls. Look at how big and tall the branches are. The tree has that much roots under the ground. You see how many branches it has? Yeah. That's how much roots it has underneath the ground going deep down into the soil. So okay. they're underground leaves. I mean, no. underground sticks. Branches in a way, but they're the roots, right? So we can see just some of them here. All right. Now, now let's talk about the animal part because I think you're right. This could make a cool animal home. So everyone go like this. And then go like this. And then hop. <laughs> yes. I think this would be an amazing place for us to drink some water from the dew. Okay. So does it meet all the checklists? Water, food, and shelter? Yeah. Yeah, so this could be a cool honey bar. All right, you guys. Good job. Let's see what else we do. And so we'll go by it. Oh, God. I just rubbed up it. <laughs> Oh, it's too sweet. I like it. I don't like it. I too don't sweet. I don't like it. This way. This way. On this side of me. All the way down on the other side. Because this is a place where there is quite a bit of poison ivy. So everyone needs to have their feet on the pavement. So what I'm going to do is teach you what poison ivy looks like so that you can stay away from it. Okay? So we're going to look at this one right here. Can everyone see this plant right yeah. here? Okay. So guys, stand back if off the plants though. So this poison ivy plant has, let's count how many leaves it has. Three. three. They always have three leaves. Two. Three. Okay, show me with your fingers. Poison ivy has three, three, three leaves, okay? So here's a rhyme to help you remember. Leaves of three. You say it. Leaves of three. Let it be. Let it be. Which means don't touch it. So not a, not a three-leaf clover. Can I have that stick, please? Thank you. So one more clue about poison ivy. In between the three leaves, it has a little dot of reddish. Can you see that right there? Yeah. Can you see it right there? Yeah. I'm going to come closer to you guys. I find another one. Yep, there's some right here. I see Little it. tiny bit of red. That one is not that as red. One. Look at this one. I don't see redness. Yeah, there's just a little bit. 
So it has, hey guys, one more, one more thing I gotta show you about poison ivy. Two more things actually. <laughs> no, I'll explain when it does, but that is not. Um, so the last thing about how poison ivy looks is that it does not have symmetry. Raise your hand if you learned about symmetry in math. You remember learning about symmetry? I heard of it. Symmetry means that if you fold something in half, both sides match perfectly. Right? So if you fold it in half, it would be matching. But let's look at this leaf for a second. Do you see the line down the middle? Yeah. Does this half look exactly the same as that half? No. No, it doesn't. Right? They don't match one side to the other. They do not have symmetry. So poison ivy leaves are not symmetrical, okay? Poison ivy can grow on the ground. Poison ivy can grow tall. These plants right here are poison ivy. And they are a vine and they can grow up trees. They can grow up trees. Yes, you see yeah. the vine on this oh, tree? Yeah. And then there's vines to like pop that tree? Yeah. 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 Do they always have red um, the, You don't always see the red so clearly in the middle, but that's one of the things to look for. So if it has three leaves and you're not sure, should you touch that plant? No. No, no. don't what about touch it. a parrot? Exactly. But have a flowers have a very different yeah. look about them, don't they? They have like heart-shaped leaves. So those we know are not poison ivy, right? It's a question. But they still... Boys and girls, uh, let's go down a little further so we get a better view of this looking thing in the tree. Yeah. Hey girls, what are you stepping in? <laughs> the one leaf thing. Okay. So, um... I'm pointing straight to a spiderweb looking thing in the tree. Mm -hmm. Raise your hand if you see the spiderweb looking thing in that short tree over there. Okay. All right. Raise your hand if you think it's a spider. It's kind of too big, right? Yeah. There's not spiders in that web. It's a cocoon. Kind of. It's a trillion. Think about a kind of looking thing that changes into something else. A cow! Caterpillar! Caterpillar! Yeah, Inside of those are tent caterpillars and they're going to change into moths. So later on in the trail, um, there's going to be one real close to the trail and I'll bend it over and we can look inside of it. Okay, you see the caterpillar. Mm. Yep, good eye. All right, let's carry on and see what else we can find. The vines are growing up super tall. So don't look at the sun, but you can see that all the way up these tree branches is this vine growing. So what I want to know is, is this vine right here that starts down low poison ivy? No! No, because no, it doesn't yes, have ivy leaves! Yes. Oh, you guys are such great nature yes, detectives. Let's count the leaves. One, two, three, four, five. Can that be poison ivy with five no. leaves? No. no. Good. And then you said that the two sides of the leaves match or they have symmetry. So that also tells us it can't be poison ivy, right? You guys did not fall for the trick. You were super smart. Nice job. Yes. Happy. And it doesn't have to Yeah, that's right. So this is the plant that most people confuse with poison ivy. Here it is. Right? But it has five leaves. It's called Vir yeah, it's called Virginia creeper. Oh, so I love that. It grows as a vine. It grows on the forest floor. Creeper. It grows up trees. It creeps around. Um, but it is not poison ivy, and it's it is fine to touch it. Right? It's a creeper. Can I touch it? No, this one. This one does have three leaves, but this is actually the jack flower. Yes. Mm. Oh, see. Mm. Wait, that's a seventeen. This is the jack flower. 18, 19. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we're like getting 21. So There's 20. All right, good. Found a plant that they knew already by heart, and it's growing over here. There's two kinds of it. This fern. one. Oh, a few of you know the name. Ferns. Yeah. yeah. You know, ferns are a special plant where their their leaves look a little bit like feathers. Feathers, ferns. They both start with an F, so it helps me remember that these plants are ferns. So this one kind of has a whorl shape to it. And then this is another kind. We are going to see so... Yep, the bald eagle feathers. Interesting. They're, these are a really neat plants. So we're going to see a lot of them. This is a plant that's okay to touch. Yep, it's fine. And it has 
guys, this rock wall that's across the water, okay? Look at me, though. Look at me. You guys are the rock wall. Then we're going to pretend this is the water of Mirror Lake, and I'm standing on the other side of the lake, okay? <laughs> Now, anytime I say a word, a sound wave travels out of my mouth. Did you guys know that sound travels in waves? Yeah. yeah. But they're invisible. You can't see them normally. But we're going to pretend my hand is the sound wave, okay? So if I say the word high, then the sound wave from my word starts traveling across the water. It travels in a wave all over the water until it gets to the rocks across the other side. And when it gets to the rocks, watch this. Can I touch your shoulder? It goes, hi. It bounces back. So the sound wave starts traveling back over the water. Listen. And the sound wave eventually gets back to my yeah. ear and, and I hear the sound a second time. That's how echoes work. I hear the sound when I say it and then after the sound wave bounces off the rock and the water, then it will go back to my ear and I'll hear it again. Do you guys want to try that out? Yeah. 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 Make a single line behind me. So I'll explain how it works and then we'll all get to travel. Okay. When it's not your turn, you are going to need to be super quiet. If you're shuffling your feet or talking, we won't be able to hear the echoes, okay? This is a windy day, and the wind pushes the sound waves. So if we're going to listen for our echoes, you guys have to be very Echo. quiet. When it is your turn, you're going to step up right here. I'll stand next to you, and you have to point your mouth straight across the water because you want the sound waves to bounce okay so don't put your mouth up or down or to the Echo. side you gotta point your mouth straight across the water you have to pick a short word to say i'm going to say the word hi you can say your name it can be any school appropriate word but we're not going to scream because if other people that are hiking here hear a scream they might be worried that somebody's hurt or in danger but we're not in danger, we're just having fun, right? So you can pick your name or a word that you want to say. Here's the last thing you have to do. Be super duper loud, okay? Do you want to see how it works? Yeah. Okay, everybody listen. Hi! Did you hear the echo? Yeah. Okay. So we'll all try that one at a time. Go ahead and step up here. I heard it too. So be as loud as you can. Cora! I heard it. Peppa Pig! <laughs> I heard your echo. My mom did! Hola! I heard it. Hi! Do you want to try louder? Oh, I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember. I didn't know you had to be this? Who the baby is that? Hi! Can we climb up? We're going around the we have to stay in line for very thin part of the trail. So we literally have to be one behind the other for this part, adults too. So if you don't mind stepping into the line, um, we'll have to go just single file. Now, when we are going around Echo Rock, this giant thing is Echo Rock, you're gonna be so close to the rock that you could just reach out and touch it, okay? So when you do that, you think you should scratch off this green stuff? No. No, no. what is this stuff anymore? Moss, right? And it's alive, I so we wouldn't want to hurt it. And then raise your hand if you see any little ferns growing out of the rock. Right here, so we want to be gentle with those if we touch those. And then how about this weird grayish greenish stuff? Is that alive? No. No. Yes. No. No. Yes. No. No. Yes. 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 It's alive. It is alive. This grayish greenish stuff is called lichen, and it's like a cross between a mushroom and a plant. Lichen. Um, so it is alive, you can feel it, but don't make it fall off, okay? It's, it feels kind of scaly a little bit. 
right? When you're walking, also make sure you just touch the actual rock because if you feel this rock, it has a clue about what kind of rock it is. Okay, it has a clue. So rub your hands and then look under the rock and see if you can figure out what kind of rock it is. Um, All right, everyone, step in your chair. What does it feel like? It's for it always gets And I think she also said you can look under the rock for a clue of what kind of rock it is on the ground. Like, what do you see on the ground? Right here. Sand. So what kind of rock do you think it is? Salt. Salt rock. You just said the word that's on the ground. Sand rock. Sand stone. Sand stone. It literally says right there. Something written. Just calm. Sand rock. It's a 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 sand Stay down off the rock, guys. On the trail. Okay, boys and girls. I'm going to ask you if you were a scientist and you had to name this rock that we've been touching, what Is name it a sand rock? Sand rock. Sand rock. Okay, you are so close to the name the scientists really gave it. What's sand stone. What's, what's another word for Each rock? rock. What's rock. another sand word for rock? Sand rock. Sand stone. Sand stone. Sand stone. Sand stone. What's another word for rock? Stone. 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 Good. So the scientist named it sandstone. You guys got it, right? Just from putting the clues together. That's awesome. Now, what is this weird brown stuff that's up? Root. creeping Root. on the ground? Yeah. Roots. Good. Follow the roots up and you can see the pine trees that are growing on top of the rock. Okay. Look at those really small ones even. So they're really finding a way to survive, even though they're growing on a hard rock. Keep walking and be careful. Uh, oh, there's an orange peel. Yo, that looks like a diving board for sure. <laughs> that looks like a diving board. Whoa. Look at all that. Oh, 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 look at all these roots coming off. Stop thinking. Guys, okay, so when you get over here, the tree must up. Stand on it, jump Whoa. on to the floor. Oh, this is you so know, some people again make graffiti, so the writing, the writing on there is not. Flame it. Flame it. It's a flame. But what I did want you to look at is the holes in there. That was made by nature. Oh, it would like, it would like she go to that anymore. I feel it. Now, boys and girls, oh, look at all yeah. this red stuff. Yeah, I should. Are you fascinated? I can't look at this hole. It's so snug. Riley, you can fix it when we get off. Yes. Oh. Oh. It's a Keisha sand. Can we help? This is, can we it's a Keisha sand. Look at the colors over here, boys and girls. That sand is a little more red, but what about this sand? It's orange. Right? There's different minerals in the rocks that make it. Keisha sand. 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 And then, boys and girls, I think that rock looks like an animal face. A it tiger. looks like an elephant. A bear. A tiger. A tiger. Different kids say different things. Some I kids say lion. Bear. I've heard bear. I've heard dog. Yeah, I've heard that's crocodile. Yeah, that's Elephant. a bear. Let's Why take a picture in front of the animal face. All second graders gather up there. It's a bear. Picture. 98. Yes. What's your guess? It is older than 150. You are very close, but it's less than 250. 251. It was less than 250. Ooh, tell me a number less than 250. 159. 
Older than 190, bigger number than 190. No. Oh, you are three away. At 220, you are three away. 223. No, three away the other direction. You have to subtract. Math and nature. I just snuck that in. There. 217 years old. So as we go, I'll try to find a, a pine tree, that same kind of pine tree that's a little closer to your age. You guys are eight? Yeah. Yeah. I'm seven. seven. Okay. I'll, let's, I'm try, eight. let's try to find one that's around your age. On um, the broken leaves there, or the old leaves. Do you see it? Oh, he flew down. It's a No, we're going to be back in like 10 minutes. You think you can wait that long? No. No. As that 217 year old, but it is a lot smaller. So if I had to guess, this is like a high school age tree. It's a little bit older than you guys. Maybe about that, a little bit younger. But if you want to come and feel the pine needles gently, then you can. It's a lie, so don't pull them off. You can see the new pine needles are growing because it's springtime. So those are going to grow out and get long. They're a little bit pokey, right? He's a little beetle. Oh, and that's a mosquito. I don't want the mosquito. But the beetle, the beetle doesn't bite. The beetle just landed on my arm for no reason. He's just okay. hanging out. It's you, not as can, 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 can I have We can oh, take turns, but be gentle with it. Rex ha found this giant oh, beetle. No! <laughs> it's okay. It has wings, so it's able to fly. All right, boys and girls. Here's the reason, the real reason that we stopped over here. Come close. Remember we showed, we looked at the web that was far away in the tree? So we're going to look at it more closely oh, yeah, now. It stand has back. something in it. Stand and back. Stand back. Stand have, back. I'm going to bend the tree forward. Stand back. Then, stand back. Oh, yeah, Dad yeah, opened too. one of them when I was in that school. Mm -hmm. Why does it have stuff in it? I can't it? see. Oh, so so we'll take turns. So this is their home. So I'm not going to tear into it. But you can see the caterpillars. Oh yeah. Right? The little brown specks. Do you see the tiny specks? <coughs> yeah. Those are poop. Caterpillar poop. But the caterpillars are inside. Do you see it under there? Yeah, they're right there. There's a yeah, lot of them. They're right there. Yeah. My dad opened one of them up. There's, there's a lot of them in there. Right. Think the you web is not, it. It's okay. The web is not going to hurt you. It's just, it feels a little smooth. Can I feel it? But just wash your hands after because there's caterpillar poop on there. It I'm ready to wash it. Yeah. Caterpillar yeah. poop? Yeah. And did you see the caterpillars? Yeah. Yeah. They're right there. Yeah. Oh, it oh, feels, feels so soft. soft. Right? It feels pretty soft. Let's not tear it though because this is, this is their home. All right, I'm gonna put the tree, oh, one. tree back up. I'm oh, yeah. gonna put the tree back up. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Tree. You can see them moving around in there. Okay. Yeah, right? Try to it right in. You no, know, the other one. Yeah, try like. It's just fun to use your imagination and make up stories. So when I see that plant, it looks to me like an umbrella, and I kind of think that would be the perfect spot for a fairy dance party under there. What do you think? Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's just no. what my imagination tells me. Yeah. So yes, right yeah. now, this, this umbrella plant, which is a mayapple, is blooming. Like the so look at the white flowers. flowers. Oh. Yeah. So the real name of this plant is a mayapple. It's not really an umbrella plant. It just looks like an umbrella plant. So after this flower gets pollinated by a bee or a butterfly, it, comes in, a it turns bee. into an apple. Yeah, it makes a very small apple-type fruit that the animals like to eat. So this is a really neat plant. Can plus people it gives eat food it? to the animals. It? No, it's not like the apples that we eat. Those are much bigger and juicier. And but that's good food for the for animals. Yeah. Well, and there's one last young flower under there. Good. You see it? Are the biters? Look at this orange. Look at this orange. This one last thing because we do not usually that see good. that color in nature. Does anyone have an idea of what that might be? What do you think? 
Okay, now sap is kind of like tree blood, right? That runs through the tree. Yeah. And usually when the sap comes out, it, it looks um, kind of clear. And then when it dries, it can look kind of white. Okay, so it wouldn't look orange like that. It isn't yeah. sap, but that's a I'm good guess. Any other ideas? <laughs> what? Lichen. No, it's not lichen. It's not. What do you think? Uh, orange flower. It's not a flower. Orange mushroom. Oh, now you're getting mushroom closer. He, he said, is it an orange mushroom? Now, mushrooms are like to grow on, on dead wood, right? And help break it down and recycle the wood. Mm -hmm. So that's in the mushroom family. And it's actually, you're never going to believe this. It's a slime mold. Ew! Yeah, but it's a fungus. It's a fungus. It is a fungus, and it's a slime mold. So raise your hand if you've ever made slime before. Doesn't it kind of look oh, more like that? Slime. Shiny? Yeah. Yeah. But that is alive. It's a living thing called slime mold. Pretty wild. Great job on your hike, boys and girls. While we're walking back, I want you to think of the, the favorite thing that you saw or did on our hike, okay? And I want to hear about it as we go back. You can tell your friends.